the secret dream, of, of course, would be to play Scarlett O'Hara. It would be wonderful. Uh, I had no idea of doing it. I didn't know how to act, first of all. Uh, but that, that shouldn't stop me, should it? <laughs> Not knowing how to act. <laughs> Selznick was determined to have an unknown play Scarlet. For two years, he scoured America. Girls came out in swarms from behind lunch counters, from beauty parlors and finishing schools. Kay Brown led the search. He said he was going to send me through the South looking for Scarlet. I said, over my dead body, you're going to send me through the South looking for Scarlet. But of course, those were the things that made Selznick. That was the most tremendous thing that ever happened. I didn't want to do it at all. In Atlanta, in one day, 500 hopefuls turned out. Selznick spent at least $50,000 interviewing 1,400 would-be Scarlets before confessing to the greatest failure of my career, end quote. We were really looking for Scarlet, but you don't find Scarlets, you know. So, Selznick knew now that he was not going to find his Scarlet in Atlanta or Amarillo. She would not come from Hollywood either, although Selznick screen tested at least 33 American actresses. Photoplay magazine commissioned a composite portrait of what Scarlett O'Hara should look like. It looked a lot like Vivian Lee. Come back to our world and we'll show you for the first time ever the screen test of Vivian Lee and some of the losers. Our world will continue with Gone with the Wind, making of a classic, 1939. Factory incentives mean your Subaru dealer has up to $1,200 to make great deals on great wheels. So right now is the time to make a great deal on select models at your Subaru dealer. Test drive a Subaru at your local Subaru dealer today. Hello, folks. Me and old Whisper and Bill are out taking advantage of our good nature at a Tennessee State Park. That's right. You can stay at a comfortable cabin. The rates are reasonable. Just call 1-800-421-6683. But me and Jerry like it out here where there's not another soul around. This is true. <laughs> Excuse me, could we please have your autographs? Seems <laughs> our avid yes. fans find us no matter where we go. They <laughs> don't. Thank you, Mr. Cash. Mr. Haggard. <laughs> Jerry Haggard. Whisper and John. Why pregnant women should avoid too much vitamin A at 11. Welcome back to Our World. Tonight is a rather special edition, a story told through the eyes of a camera, which explains why we're in an imitation screening room instead of at an imitation newsstand. The newsstand would tell us this. By the 15th of December, 1939, Europe was at war with itself, again. The screening room tells us this. By the 15th of December, 1939, America will be at war with itself, again. Only this time, the Civil War will be fought on a silver screen. That is, if the uncivil war to make a movie out of Gone with the Wind ends before opening night. Right now, that war remains bogged down in the battle of the Scarlet's O'Hara. Here was David Selznick's problem in 1938. His quest for some Betty Jones from Bartlesville to play Scarlett O'Hara had failed, as he probably knew it would. But he didn't want a superstar either, somebody who might put too much of herself in the part. So Selznick spent a lot of time hunkered down in his screening room watching test after test after test of ordinary movie stars who wanted to play the most vexing vixen in the history of the movies. The South wanted Tallulah Bankhead or a Southern girl. The North wanted Katherine Hepburn. The West wanted Joan Fontaine. All around Hollywood, in every studio, wanted their star to be Scarlet. 
So that, that's why all the testing took place. Oh, Ashley, you're wrong. I do want to escape, too. I, I'm so tired of it all. I've, I've struggled for food and for money. I've weeded and hoed and picked cotton and even plowed until I can't stand it any longer. Oh, Ashley, you're wrong. I do want to escape, too. I'm so very tired of it all. I've struggled for food and for money. I've weeded and hoed and picked cotton. I've even plowed until I can't stand it all. Oh, Ashley. Ashley, I do want to escape, though. Oh, Ashley. I'm so tired of everything. I struggle for food and money. I've weeded and hoed, picked cotton, and plowed until I just can't stand it another minute. Jean Arthur was an old, old friend of Selznick's. She would have been all right. All of them would have been all right, but he was looking for the perfect one. And the closest we could get to a perfect scarlet, that is, you know, a woman who could claw her way to the top and, and who was really the first woman's liber who, who fought the world and won. The closest to that personality in the testing was Paulette Goddard. Why, Charles Hamilton, you handsome old thing, you. Did you think it was kind of you to bring this good-looking brother of yours down here to break our poor, simple country house? I want to eat barbecue with you, Charles Hampton, so don't you go off land with any other girl, because I'm mighty jealous. Quiet, speak. All right. And you want to show the back of the thing? Yes. You want to turn around, now turn around. Well, right. goodbye now. But Paulette Goddard wasn't proper enough to play the improper Scarlet. Miss Goddard was living with Charlie Chaplin. Selznick told her she could have the part if she could produce a marriage license. But if Gable played his part to get a divorce, Ms. Goddard would not get married to play her part. The tests for Scarlet, of course, were fascinating to look at today. Everybody had a different concept. And probably nobody had a closer view than Douglas Montgomery, the actor who got paid to kiss the contestants, but not to judge them. In this test, the man is being screened. It's Melvin Douglas testing for the part of Ashley, or maybe for the part of Douglas Montgomery. It said Selznick liked what he saw, but not enough. Say that you love me. Say it. Say that you love me. Oh. Don't. Don't. Still no Scarlet, and it was time to start shooting the movie. Selznick had to clear out his back lot anyway, so he began with the most spectacular scene in the film, The Burning of Atlanta. The man who talked him into it was art director Lyle Wheeler. I knew that we had to uh, wreck a certain number of buildings to get them out of the way. So I came up with the idea that the best thing to do would be to have the fire on the lot. I got permission to burn down everything I could light a match to. You could only burn it once. No retakes here. The close-up scenes of Scarlet and Rhett fleeing the burning Atlanta would be superimposed later. The fire burning, raging mad. We had all the fire departments of Culver City and Los Angeles and Pasadena. Everybody was there. They thought the world was on fire. It was such a huge conflagration. All the sets and all the boxes, everything we could find went into that fire. The flames carried 300 feet into the night sky. 200 invited guests watched the scene, among them an actress whom Selznick had considered for Scarlet, but whom he was to meet for the first time that night, Vivian Lee. The scene was at its height when Myron Selznick walked in, holding by the hand a very, very beautiful girl. And she came in with Myron, who brought her up to Mr. Selznick, who was standing and watching this whole scene, and said, David, I want you to meet your Scarlett O'Hara. And I tell you, she was the embodiment of Scarlett O'Hara. No one who saw her could think anything else. Mr. Selznick just flipped. He said to me, she is everything I dreamed of. Now, if she can only act. <laughs> 